If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's what I like to hear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glad everybody's here with us tonight. We're about to have an awesome midweek service. God shows up at midweek service just like he does on Sunday service. Just like he does at General Conference when Jeff Arnold's preaching. He shows up here just the same. It's the same God. Um, we open up with prayer uh, on Wednesday nights. But before we do that, I just want to know if we can, before we 
bring our requests to God, can we praise him first? Can we give him some glory before we bring some needs before him? Can we thank him before? We know Psalm, we know, we know Psalm 150. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. My God is good. If he didn't do another thing for me, he's good. And I, I'm, not, I'm not satisfied. Can we keep praising him just a little bit more? God is good. God has been good to us. Oh, man. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise with him, with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. I serve the king of kings. I serve the Lord of lords. There is none other. There is no one before him. There is nobody after him. He has been so good to us and I'm so thankful. Mm. Oh, bless the Lord. I give you honor, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for pouring out blessing. I thank you, Lord, for making a way when it didn't seem like you could. Whenever every answer seemed like a no, you opened the door for me. God, you made a way in the dark and stormy day. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're a healer. You're a way maker. Hallelujah. God, I give praise unto your name. Oh, God, when we praise him, he will show up. Whenever you, whenever you send up a praise, he will be there. He dwells in the midst of praise and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, so if anybody has a need, go ahead and lift up your hand and we will, we will pray for those needs. Sister Shelley. Prayers for traveling mercies and for the Pate family right now. Sister Janet. surgeon and um, it, he's on his last antibiotic treatment this coming Monday so we need to continue to pray against the infection yeah, yeah, yeah. Bone his leg. Um, family of Jan Anderson their stepson passed away um, and he was just 50 years old so the funeral's tomorrow so remember them um, Neil Myers it's sister O'Banion sister-in-law uh, sister-in-law's brother is facing cancer surgery tomorrow um, sister Emma Harmon and her sisters in Bedford Kentucky need a physical healing um, Kathy Crafton, neighbor of Pastor and Sister Faulkner. Um, the cancer is being removed from the uh, face right between the nose and the eye. So remember that. Um, Robert Brown is a friend of uh, Brother and Sister Marshall in Texas. And um, 
Robert Brown is paralyzed from the chest down, and he needs a miracle, and God can do God can do it. Um, and also, we'll mention again Lance Pate and his family. They're going to be traveling um, for the funeral for his grandfather this weekend. Um, Natalia needs a touch um, from a viral, a viral infection. She needs healing in her body. Um, continue to remember Louisiana and Texas and these southern states um, with the hurricane damage. And like we said, we knew that there know of at least six churches that have uh, sustained very extensive damage. Um, and then all of those battling sickness and affliction um, who need emotional healing, prodigals, unity, harvest of souls. This last Sunday, we had a glimpse of of what it's like to have several guests in here that that uh, that that need the Lord and that God wants God wants to be in this house. God wants us to have that every Sunday. And so above all, we need to be praying for unity and end time harvest and revival. And God is going to do it. So let's go ahead. If you can all join me in prayer for these needs. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus. God, we come before the great and mighty God of all creation. And we bring these needs before you, Jesus. God, we know that you are faithful. We know that you hear us, God. And that you are doing a work even right now in every need that we spoke, oh God, in this place tonight. God, we trust that your hand is mighty to save. That your hand is mighty to heal. God, we trust that by your stripes that we are healed. God, we know that you are doing a great work and that you are that you have a mighty work planned for Point of Grace and for Madison and Jefferson County. God, we trust you for a harvest of souls, God. We know, Lord Jesus, that there is emotional healing that will take place at this altar. God, I speak it right now by faith. I trust you for the healing. Oh, God, we give you honor. Can everyone just thank him for what he's going to do? Can somebody just thank him right now in advance as we enter this worship service? Please don't don't forget that he's able. Don't forget that he's going to do it. Don't forget to praise him and worship him. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. There's power in his name. There's miracles in his name. There's healing in his name. There's something about that name when we say Jesus. Oh, has he made a way for y'all today? Has he made a way for you this week? Has he blessed y'all this week? Has he opened doors for y'all? Oh, God has blessed me in so many ways. Oh, the favor and the blessings that he has shown me time and time and time in my life. There's just something about that name where we just say Jesus. The heavens opens up. Come to the part of service to take up our offering. If you have it, lift it up to the Lord as we say our dominion prayer. Upon the authority and by the reward I have given, it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today in your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is mute, the curse is broken. I live on earth in heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that the other room receive it. We see jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales commissions, benefits and settlements, states and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks and mail, gifts and prizes, bills paid off, debts and smith, and glory to receive. My whole family will be saved and walk. God, my family have perfect health, abundance, and will be to find favor and blessings. I shall be blessed going in, I shall be blessed going out. All I do you are prospering. In Jesus' name, amen, and it is so.
him to know he's welcome here tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, praise team. And I haven't heard that song in (laughs) that song in a long time. That's a beautiful, beautiful chorus. Amen, amen, amen. We want him to know he's welcome tonight. Amen. Turn to somebody close to you. Let them know they're about to get a raise at their job. (laughs) That's good. That's good. I like that. Amen. Somebody just told somebody, they said, in the near future, I see a job. I love that. I love that. That's good. That's good. Amen. Thank you for coming to church tonight. Thank you as well for everything that everybody did on Sunday. What a great, great, great day. A lot of uh, a lot of seed planted, and I did send out a call to everybody on Monday. If you had a hand in getting somebody to church, I hope and I pray that you're making every effort to get them back here. Amen. We got to keep that back door shut. Amen. It's not hard for people to come and feel God's presence. What ha- What's hard is getting them to realize that God wants them to incorporate a lifestyle change. Amen. And so thank you so very much for doing that, and um, I want to also thank uh, Brother brother Randall, he's up there, and Brother Breeden over here, they came and were able to get our amplifier replaced, there was some um, some damage done to it, that's why we didn't have house speakers, and they were able to, to get that done, so thank you, man, I appreciate y'all very, very, very much, they took time out of their day-to-day to come and do that, thank you so very much, amen, and I'm thankful for the opportunity that we have to be able to uh, to broadcast and to, and to hear We're very, very thankful for uh, what they've uh, what they've done. And for those of y'all that haven't noticed, um, this past Saturday we came up and we installed crowd microphones. So we've got one over this section, one over that section, one over this section, and then one over the last section. So y'all that are uh, beating your kids during church and <laughs> uh, talking about people and everything like that. Here's, listen, here's all I'll tell you. We put the first one in on Saturday, and um, I was sitting about where Sister Wallace is sitting. We were testing that one out. Brother Fawbush and Brother Breeden were up there in the baptistry. And Brother Randall could hear them with that microphone. Mm-hmm. Y'all better watch your mouth in the house of God. No. Well, um, I don't know if y'all, if y'all went back and watched the service on Sunday, but about the hour right around the hour mark when we had y'all sing with like Tis So Sweet and stuff like that. If you get a chance, go back and listen to that. We, we turned those on. It makes a huge, huge difference. And also what it'll do, anybody that's watching online now, if we have a tongues interpretation, uh, they'll be able to hear that, all right, um, and uh, to hear the interpretation as well. Trust me, they pick up a lot. And so um, I think, uh, I think those, is, those men as well for coming up here on Saturday to, uh, to be able to help out with that. Going to be a great weekend here, Sunday, 11 o'clock, prayer, 1130, uh, worship service. No food pantry this Saturday due to the holiday weekend. We will do it next Saturday, which is the um, 12th. Thank you so much. So uh, we'll, we'll do that. And uh, thank you all for your uh, continued prayers for everything that, that we have going on. God is moving in our community, and uh, God is using us. And... Um, I can't go into detail about this prayer request, but what I will ask you to do, if you will please pray for a friend of mine, and I have had about, uh, today was the uh, third Bible study that I've had with him, and he's just about ready to go swimming in Jesus' name. And um, thank you, Jesus. And there's a lot of other other things that are going on there and here's all I'll say God's going to use him to be a testimony to help other people All right. how many y'all know a man with an argument is no match for a man with an experience and uh, that's what that's what God is doing so um, I won't go into details about it Um, it is uh, is something that is is very personal 
that uh, he had approached me about. But um, I'm thankful for the, uh, for the opportunity in this last day to reach people. Amen. And somebody say small groups. Some of you are like, what is a small group? I'm glad you asked. Next month on September the 27th, we are going to get those kicked off. We had a facilitator meeting on Sunday evening, and uh, it's a very, very, very exciting. Uh, we have right now on the list 77 people that call themselves members of this church, and so we're going to break up into about eight or nine groups, and they will be represented geographically. So we've got um, got every just about every area of this county covered, and uh, it's very casual. Um, it'll be like 40 to 45 minutes, so your neighbors, your friends at work, there's no pressure, there's no preaching, there's no palming of heads, there's none of that, and so uh, we invite you, we're going to, um, next week, Lord willing, we should have our groups broke out, so that way we'll have a few weeks then to go ahead and get this, uh, uh, get you to get people invited and get it kicked off. It's going to be a great, great, great time, because um, we, we've got to be honest with ourselves just with the world that we're living in right now, what would ever happen to us if this building was taken away? Well, it's, it's not possible. <laughs> be thankful we're not living in California right now. All right? And I'm not, not saying that to be scary or anything like that. It's, it's the intention of the enemy to, uh, to come against the church. And so uh, we're going to be prepared for whatever God has in store right before the rapture, all right? Also, I've got a, uh, a little uh, sign here that I found. Uh, if you want to grab one of these and maybe put it on your refrigerator, put it on a bulletin board you have at your home, you're invited. What? Fellowship with God. How? By reading His Word. When? Daily. Where? In your home. Jeremiah 15 and 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy words were unto me a joy in the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Jehovah, God of hosts. We have one in our home, and I encourage you to take one. Put it up in your home. Let your kids see it. Let your friends see it. Let your family see it. Everybody that, that comes over, I'm thankful for the word of God. That's what we're all going to be judged by. Amen. Mark chapter number 2. Three passages of scripture for our text tonight. Thank you to the young men that helped to pass those out. Appreciate that very, very much. Amen. We'll get to work here. Mark chapter 2, Luke chapter 5, and then John chapter number 5. Mark 2, and the, again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. It was noise that he was in the house. Everybody see Jesus was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Verse number three. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they left the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Luke chapter five, the same uh, recollection of the same uh, event, according to uh, Luke, Luke 5 and 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. They sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. See, y'all thought he was on a stretcher. You thought he was just on a little bed. But when you need a miracle and you've got people of faith around you, it doesn't matter how big your bed is. It doesn't matter if you've got a couch. It doesn't matter if you've got a car. If you've got people that are around you that believe, you can reach Jesus and Jesus can touch you. And when, verse 20, when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And finally, John 5, verse 1, And this, there was a feast. Of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these porches lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, troubled the water, 
Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had now been now a long time in that case, saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, Sir, I'm, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step it down before me. Somebody always beats me to the punch. Right. Two instances of the supernatural and the miraculous. With the help of the Lord, I want to talk to you in the following subject tonight. Three roles. Somebody say three roles on the stage of the supernatural. Take your Bible, if you would. Would you clutch it to your chest? Could we pray tonight together that the Lord would help us and the Lord would touch us? Master, I realize and I recognize that I'm nothing without you. But God, I stand tonight very humbly before your throne asking for you to anoint my feeble lips. Take a coal from the altar, place it upon my lips. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let the gifts of the Spirit operate. Let the fivefold ministry be exemplified. I bind and take authority over every force that would be contrary to your plan and your purpose. Let there be clarity of the mind and let there be focus for every man, woman, and child that is both here in this building and watching online. We thank you for that tonight, God. Minister to us. We'll give you all the praise, glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, in Jesus' name, the Lord bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. A, uh, a theatrical example, um, the, the title tonight, um, when we think of a, of a stage, um, oftentimes uh, that's, that's a place for performance and things like that. But if, if you would, that definition that you think of, and I'd like you to alter that just for, just for a moment over the next few moments as we, as we talk about this tonight. But we see the stage as a place where something plays out. There's a storyline. There's events. There's things that happen there. On the stage, people come on that stage and they play a role. They might have an action to do. They might have something to say. They might have a song to sing. But that person has a responsibility nonetheless. There's one director, but each of us choose what we say and what we do on the stage called life. Our lives here tonight, our life, my life, and your life, it truly is a stage. And there's a script that we choose to follow. Now, the review at the end of the production of our life will be judged by one critic. And that one critic has the power, the authority, and the ability to be the end-all, say-all for everything. Because he has a master script that he has given to us. And he lets us know if we follow this, no matter where we find ourselves, he will be pleased with what we have done in what we do. The the Lord reminded me. I was I was I, the other the other morning. I I had my prayer time and I was I was waiting to get uh, Gibson up for school and and um, the Lord took me. This He said go you know go to where they they let the the dude in through the the roof and everything. And I'm like okay. okay. And I just started kind of looking at it. And He said now go to the go to the the man at, at Bethesda. And so I I went there and began looking at it. And I was like okay God you 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 know, you, you performed a miracle and that's, that's awesome. That's great. And I was thinking to myself and my flesh, I'm like, okay, um, maybe the Lord would want me to talk about, um, you know, cause there's some things in the word of God. When we look at it, what you've got to wonder what if, for instance, the, the man in, in Luke and, and the, the first two passages that we read, uh, you know, men, husbands here tonight, let's be honest. Okay. Um, what would happen if our wives came home and Brother O'Banion, all of a sudden there's a big hole in the ceiling? 
Well, honey, Jesus was here early. Yeah, don't give me that Jesus example again. You know, and so I'm, I'm thinking about that, but the Lord, the Lord reminded me, he let me know, he said, no, he said, I, I want you to see because we, we're going to read on in that, in that story, in that house of something that happened, and the Lord let me know, he said, in your life, he said, there are three roles that you can choose to pick from that, that your life plays out. The, 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 we, when, the, when the play ends, we, we need to understand that there's not a chance to go back and make corrections, all right? It's not, it's not the way that it works. His, his mercy and grace is available for us right now. So the first role we have tonight is the receiver. Everybody say the receiver. Now, in this, I'm, I'm not uh, talking about, you know, something that's uh, electrical or, or something like that, but this is something that, that everybody becomes because you find yourself in a position that we need help. There's something we have to get from somebody other than ourselves. You know, there's, what do they say? There's two kinds of people in life. There's takers and there's givers. We need to be on the receiving end of something that we need. The situation of this role remains the same. When we are the receiver, when we take on the role of the receiver, we don't have any other options. We don't, we don't have any other uh, options. And in this case, for what we're talking about tonight, first off, in, in Mark and Luke, we read about a man who was, uh, had a palsy. He couldn't walk. He was crippled. There wasn't another option for him to be able to walk. He had to have a miracle. The Pool of Bethesda. Now, it wasn't just this one man who was impotent for, and had this for 38 years. There was a lot of other people there as well. But all of them were receivers. And it was promised, it was promised in John chapter 5 when we read about the Pool of Bethesda, it was promised that at a certain time every year, somebody would receive a miracle. And so the, the receiver in us allows us to understand and realize that something outside of ourselves has to come and touch us to make us better. Now, what are, what are some, some biblical principles for this? Matthew chapter number 9, beginning in verse 12. But when Jesus heard that, and these are uh, the religious people, the Pharisees, talking to me, he said unto them, they that be whole don't need a physician, but they that are sick. How many of you in here call your family doctor when you're feeling good and just make an appointment to go see him or her. Nobody does. Why? Because you're going to get charged $150 for them to come in and say, you're all right. They don't want to just have casual conversation with you because casual conversation costs money. And that's what Jesus was saying. But he said, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Okay, that right there in verse 13. That gives us a snapshot of the method and the mission of Jesus of Nazareth. I've come to call sinners to repentance. Now, the religious folk would say, okay, well, that, I'm glad that I'm not in that boat. Well, hold on just a minute. Second Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all. Now wait just a cotton picking minute. All. A L L. That's everybody. All should come to what? To repentance. Why would all need to come to repentance? Because we all need to receive something. We all need to get something that we're not able to get ourselves. Is anybody in here in 2020 still thankful for the blood of Jesus that washes away sins? We are very thankful for that. Amen. <laughs> then the, the receiver role, it builds faith. Can I, do I have the power and the ability to get something outside of me? And the answer is 1,000 times yes. Remember tonight, we're talking about the roles on the stage of the supernatural. But when you enter human beings into the mix, something happens. Pride causes some people 
to despise this role. Humility causes other people to embrace this role. Kind of what we, we talked about last Wednesday night, you know, I can do anything. I can either try to do it through my flesh or through the Spirit. As the receiver, I realize I don't have it all together. And turn to your neighbor and say, and that's okay. Nobody, nobody expects for you to hold it all together all the time. There's some times when you just need to go out, get in your car, roll up the windows, turn on the air conditioning, and scream to the top of your lungs. Any parents with children? All right, okay. Any parents with teenagers? Oh, I love you, Gibson. <laughs> just kidding, just joking. There's times, how about anybody have a bad day at work? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you, 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 those people that bless their heart. <laughs> Maybe a customer deal with you or something like that. Sure. There's, there's times when, when you've got to realize and you've got to understand, I, I'm not going to have it together all the time. The awareness of shortcoming can make us thankful for those around us when we're a receiver. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But there's, there's something, though, with this role that the Lord reminded me of when the receiver, and that's what it does to our psyche. And by our psyche, I mean our mental capacity. Okay? There are, there are some people that are, are of, the, of the opinion, let's say the, let's say the guy that was led him through the roof. So the Bible lets us know there was people there that brought him to that place. Now, I don't know how you are, but I know with me, if I was incapacitated to where I wasn't able to walk and I had to have people carry me, they would probably hear from me probably every 40, 45 seconds. Guys, I am, I'm so sorry. I am, I am so sorry you're having to do this. I, I don't mean to put you out. I know you've got other things you could do right now. You could be fishing. Uh, you could be out um, making carpentry stuff. I'm, I'm so sorry. You could be down at the market buying fish. I'm so sorry, guys. Please, please forgive me. And let's be honest, when you're helping somebody, probably the first thing that you want to say to somebody that acts like that is, shut up. If I didn't want to help you, I wouldn't be here right now. If I, I, I'll tell you this, as, as pastor, I, people sometimes will tell me, like, I, just, I know you've got so much going on and, and, and all this and that. Listen, if you need help praying for something, just so everybody knows how I am, I love to pray. That's just me. That's just, just me. I love to pray. When somebody asks me to pray for something, I count that as an honor and a privilege to be able to go to the Lord and say, God, I need you to help this person. I need you to take care of this right now. Because I don't look at my prayer time as a time, well, it's just, okay, you know, 40 minutes. Okay. God, I'm okay. Well, uh, thank you for Ginger. Uh, God, I thank you for uh, the dogs. God, I thank you. Okay, that's, oh, we've got 39 minutes. Okay. No, I don't look at it as that. I look at it as a time where God's going to meet me. God's going to talk to me. And there's no telling what he's going to be able to do. So, so we, it, the, being the receiver does something to our psyche. All right? Or how about the guy with the, at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5? Will anybody help me? There's, there's two different attitudes there. You've got, you've got people in Mark and Luke with this guy through the roof that are able to pretty much move heaven and earth to get him to Jesus. And then in John chapter 5, we've got somebody who's still a receiver, but there's, there's no help. There's no help. God desires this role to be temporary, but available and not abused. Let me, let me repeat that again. And I want, I want to clarify what I'm saying. God desires this role to be temporary, but available and not abused. All right. Um, wearing the welcome out. Well, yeah, this is, you know, the <laughs> this is the fourth time you've been over to my house this week. <laughs> You're welcome and all, but uh, I ain't saying you got to leave, but you got to get up out of here. All right. When we, when we understand and we've received something from God, he lets us know, listen, it's time for you to move on to a different position and a different role. Okay, everybody okay? Everybody okay? All right. Next, the observer. Everybody say the observer on the stage of the, the supernatural. Now, first off, before we get into judgment mode, and I know if you've been around uh, church a long time, if you, if you know all the, 
write acronyms and everything like that, you see this and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah I, I, I know where this is going. I know where this is going. This is the people that uh, you know, just kind of want to look back and they just want to kind of just uh, critique. That old saying, the people that complain the most normally do the least. Y- y'all don't know anybody like that, I know, but uh, that's just the way that, that life works. But before we, we allow ourselves to go there, as a society today, what is it that we look for? As human, you know what we look for? We look for escape. That's why somebody will sit in front of a screen for three hours and watch a movie and not get up one time to go to the bathroom, won't get up one time to go check their phone, but they come to a 60 or 90 minute church service and they Them corns is getting stomped on. It's it's just the way that we are because we want to escape reality. We don't want to have to worry about things. Somebody told me one time, they they said, and it it speaks so clearly to where people are at today. They told me, this was just a few months ago, they told me, they said, I look forward to going to sleep because I don't have to think about everything else that's going on. It's real. That's real. And so it's much easier for us to watch than to become involved. We, we have no real investment, though, when we watch. The, the, the man who was dropped into the house through the roof in the first part of our text. Now, we read up to verse 5, but Mark chronicles the, the definition of the, the poster children of what it means to be an observer. Let's look at verses 6 and 7 of Mark 2. But there were certain of the scribes, here's the word, sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts. Verse number 7, why doth this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? what they were doing. There was no active participation in what was going on. But the observation, or the the observer rather, possesses the unique skill to be able to sit while there's so much going on that they could be involved with. The, The observing causes something to happen. And that is this, and we see it based upon that passage of Scripture. Criticism and judgment. It's easy, for, well, we can just kind of pick that apart. because That's kind of, you know, how, how we are and, and everything like that. We may classify this role as the villain, as somebody that is, works in contrast to the plan and the purpose of God, right? It's, it's, and that what's at the core of all this is fault finding. Let's, let's look at what the Word of God says, Mark 2 and 16. When the scribes and Pharisees saw him, Eat with publicans and sinners. They said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Mark 7 and 2. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with the fire, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. Luke 15 and 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners. For to hear him and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners, and he eats with them. Luke chapter 19 and verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, saw him, said unto him, Zacchaeus, a wee little man, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at the house. Zacchaeus made haste came down and received him joyfully. And when they, there are them people again, the observers, when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with the man that is a sinner. You know what observing always does? Here's what it always does. It puts you against the divine nature of Jesus Christ. It always does that. It always does that. Observing, what does it do? It questions faith. 
Did we see that? Do we see that throughout the Gospels? You better believe we do. This, um, in, uh, uh, in, in Mark, what, what we, we read about it, and then when you go back and, and you look and see what they said, what, what, th- there was a man that, that who said that, that he came to Jesus, and Jesus, what he first recorded was, he said, your sins are forgiven. All right? There was another instance where Jesus healed somebody. There was a man, I, if I remember correctly, had a withered hand. And what they, what they did, Brother Allen, those people stood back and say, will he do that on the Sabbath? Notwithstanding that a miracle just happened. Who cares what day of the week it is? Who cares about tradition? Well, it's always been this way, and it's always, always, it's always happened like this, and it's always done like this. How many people can you name me right now that have been saved by tradition? Nobody has. It's never done anything for anybody. But it questions faith. It questions belief. It causes an awareness of want and need. The man at Bethesda. I, a question I've always asked myself, Brother Banyan, what, what about... If, if the angel came down every year, what about the person that received a miracle last year? If it was an appointed time, according to Scripture, if I get my miracle on March the 15th, come March the 14th of next year, I'm gonna, hey, hey do, do you need some help? Do you, are, are you, hey, I've been where you at, man. Listen, I was there last year, but, but that angel came down, and now I'm able to walk. I can talk right. I look right. People don't make fun of me anymore. It, when, it, it's going to happen pretty soon. Can I help? Where does it record in Scripture that that happened? I'll answer it for you. It didn't. It didn't. Maybe there was people that were gathered around to see see it happen. Maybe there was people that that gathered around to to observe what it was going to do. Observing is, and and don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. There's part of our relationship with Jesus Christ where we observe. What did his disciples do? Three and a half years, Jesus showed them by example what to do. And after that three and a half years, and he prepared them all along, saying, there's going to come a day when you're going to be released, and you've got to go. You've got to go. You can't stand around and watch anymore. You've got to become active with what I've given to you. That supervisor explaining a task to a new employee, any of you in here ever been in that position or situation? Now, it makes you so happy, doesn't it, when that person comes back to you, Brother Conklin, and says, hey, I know you showed me this before. <laughs> I kind of forgot. Would you be able to kind of help me with this? A buddy of mine worked at UPS when we were in college. And uh, it was during Christmas time, and, and UPS at Christmas time is... And the Elkhart Terminal, they, they processed a, a whole bunch of packages. And <laughs> he called me after his first night. He said, Faulkner, this is easy money. Back then, it was $15 an hour. He's like, man, he goes, I went in. He went in at 9 o'clock at night and got off at like 5 o'clock in the morning. He said, this is easy money. He said, myself and another guy, we was down in the belly of this bus. He said, the, the boxes were coming down there. He said, I was like, Brother Breed, the next night, they put that cat down there by himself. He got to his first break. He said, I looked. Now, this is like the middle of December. He said, it looked like I jumped into a pool. I was drenched with sweat. And he said, I, my first break, I went up to the guy that was down there with me the night before. I said, man, he said, where are you at? He said, man, I'm moving on to train somebody else. He said, do you need me to tell you something else from what I did last night? Well, no. He goes, I know that I've broken packages, though, man. He goes, that, they were just coming down that belt way too fast. He goes, that's all right. That's what those people get insurance for. He said, do you need some more help? Do you need me to get, now I'm paraphrasing, this isn't, these people don't have the Holy Ghost, okay? He was like, do do you need some more, would you like me to go get you some more help to come down there? He's like, no. But it was a different situation when the responsibility lies on you. How about any of us in here that have become parents? The first time you hold that child? My dad told me for years, he said, son, something's going to happen to you. (laughs) Whatever, dad. I held him for that first time. I'm going to tell you all something. Whoa. Whoa, Brother Rickerson. Man. Help. 
seriously, I don't, I don't have all this worked out, Sister Sykes. I don't, I don't got all this, I don't got all this worked out. I don't, I don't know what to do, Brother Kirk. My, da- my dad came in, he said, son, he said, you'll be all right. I'm like, what do I do, dad? He said, you'll just learn as you go. Yeah, but what about when he cries? What about when he goes, oh, it's, it's all right. They did a they did a, a class there at the hospital with my wife and I, and they said, now there's going to come some times when you're just going to have to lay them down and let them cry. Oh, I was like, no way. You've got to be joking me. I can't. I could never leave their side. Two weeks later, yeah, it's your turn. Get out of bed. Do that kid. Because we 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 learn that we we learn what to do. All right, and I'm not try, trying to be comical about it. It's it plays into what it is that we're talking about. And and the devil is more than happy though, for people to sit, observe, critique, and judge without having any kind of corn in the crib at all. Finally tonight, on the stage of the supernatural, there is the helper. Everybody say the helper. We see the examples of this, Mark 2 and Luke 5. Now, one of the the first characteristics that jumps out to me about the helper is, first and foremost, agreement. Everybody say agreement. Luke 5 and 18. And behold, men, so that's not men, that's plural, so there was more than one, brought in a bed a man which was taken with the palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. So before anything was done, Brother Tuttle, there was agreement that said, okay, hey, we're going to get Joe here. Let's call him Joe. We're going to take him to Jesus. We're going to find some way to get him to this man from Nazareth because he heals people. He, he opens blinded eyes. And listen, Joe is in bad shape. And if we can get Joe to Jesus, somehow, some way, something can happen. There's got to be agreement. Why do you think God shows up in the midst of us when we come in here? We come in and we pray. You know, Mondays and Tuesdays we're in here. We're agreeing about stuff. We're, we're praying for unity. We're, we're battling in the spirit against things that would keep people from living for God and everything like that. Why do you think that on Sunday we come in here and there's miracles and people get baptized and people get filled with the Holy Ghost? Because we have agreement. We can't pray for harvest and revival unless we have unity. There's agreement. One of the other things I love about helpers, they don't take no for an answer. Luke 5 and 19. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude. Now let's stop right there. There's a comma, but let's pause right there for just a minute. Let's be honest. We've all hit that wall before. Hey, Brother Jordan, I'm sorry, man. We, we were this close. Jesus is, Jesus is just on the other side of that wall. But I, the house is packed, man. I, I don't know what else we can do. I'm sorry. I know we've, we've brought you down here. I know that we told you that he was here, and he is here. But I just, I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe there will be another time we can try. The helper eliminates that vocabulary. It eliminates that and says, we're going to find a way. We're going we're gonna to find a way to make sure that Jordan gets to Jesus. We're going to find a way to make sure that however we need to do it. And you know what that requires? That requires us to stop looking at doors. You know what? If we punch a hole, if we tear, tear a little section off right here, listen, first of all, we're going to be noticed. Because when you're desperate and you're trying to help somebody, you don't care what anybody thinks about you. You're just willing to say, hey, whatever I've got to do to get to Jesus. Well, you can't do it. It can't be done. It will never happen. Things that you will never hear a helper say. Hello? A helper likes another helper. They team up and they're like, hey, if, if one person can do this, then what can two people do? And hey, why don't you come up here? What, what, can, what can three people do? Or what about four people? You know what? Listen, we've just got to, and maybe 
I don't, I don't see this in the, the Scripture, but just maybe when, when other people saw what was going on and they hear all this stuff going on, maybe, hey, Brother O'Banion, Maybe we can go get some other help. And maybe there's some other people that say, hey, what you guys trying to do with Joe here? Well, he's, he's had a palsy. He's had it for a long time. We just got to try to get him to Jesus. And we're trying to see about trying to get up on this roof. Hey, I know where a ladder is. Let, let me go ahead and grab a ladder. Hey, you know what? I've, I've got some, uh, some bo- boys here that could come and help. But you see what happens? We start, we start pitching in and we start helping. That old phrase, many hands make light, make light work. Absolutely right. Luke 5 and 20, and when he, being Jesus, saw Joe's faith, no. When he saw the faith of the helpers in agreement with Joe, Jesus saw that. He said, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Now, we get to the physical part in a minute, but how many know when Jesus touches you, he knows exactly what to touch first? Whew. Mm. He knows exactly what to touch first. Listen, I'll get to that physical part in just a minute, but listen, I'm the creator of the universe. I spoke this world into existence. I made you. I know exactly what it is that you need to be able to make it. Their faith. It was more than the faith of the receiver. Great faith joined with the director, who was Jesus. When that happens, it turns any stage into a supernatural stage. And a helper is interested in cooperation and adaptability to get the job done. How about Exodus? When we're talking about the ministry. Verse, chapter 17, 11 and 12. It came to pass. Moses held up his hand. Israel prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were, were heavy. They, they took a stone, they put it under him, and he sat there on it. Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Why? Because they realized and understood what it meant, what it meant when the man of God, when the woman of God, when the Spirit of God was moving and operating. Listen, whatever we've got to do to keep victory in our camp, that's what we want to do. I don't care. We'll take shifts. We can come and trade out. We can do this. We can do that. But when I'm here to help, God promises one thing. We're always going to have victory. Do you believe that? Clap your hands and give God praise tonight. Amen. How about rebuilding the walls? Nehemiah was, was uh, commissioned with this. Look at Nehemiah 4, 16 and 17. And it came to pass that from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields and the bows, and the harbingers, And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. So we'll go to verse 17 in just a minute. Brother Aaron, would you help me? So if... If you go ahead and face that way, and I'm going to, no, just stand here. We're going to stand back to back. So while Brother Aaron's working, go ahead and swing a hammer, bang a hammer, saw something, drill something. They didn't have power tools back then, but just use your imagination. While he's doing this, somebody there. Hey, 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 get away. He's working. Hey, we're rebuilding the walls. Hey, 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 stay, stay back there. Stay back there. I'm just, I'm joking, Jordan. I'm just, just play along with me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, 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 listen, hey, there's somebody. And they had, their, they had their weapons ready. Because Aaron didn't have to, Aaron's working. He don't have time to be worrying about fighting somebody. Hey, listen, Aaron, I'll fight. And you know what happened eventually then? Hey, Aaron, why don't you go ahead and trade me places there? Okay, go ahead and get out your gun. Go ahead and get out your sword. I'm, man, I'm, I'm hammering here now. All right, it's the sound of the man. Working on the chain gang. Yeah, yeah. What I'm doing here. And Aaron's got my back. I, I want, I'm going to be more productive because I'm going to be able to focus what I'm, what I'm doing. And I don't have to worry about danger because my man, he's got me covered. He's, he's, he's going to make sure that I'm taken care of. Thanks for your help. And verse 17 says this. They which build it on the wall and they that bear burdens with those that laid it. Everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work. And the, with the other hand held a weapon. So you know what? There will come some times when we do have to learn to be ambidextrous. My dad is left-handed. And when he was growing up, 
the teachers at school tried to force him to write with his right hand. And so today my dad's handwriting is not, not very good because of that. And so he can write a little bit with his right hand, a little bit with his left hand. So he's, he's kind of ambidextrous that way. There was a buddy of mine in high school. He was a baseball player. He could throw with his right and his left hand. He was able to, to do that. There, there are times spiritually when you know what God's going to call us to do. He's going to call us to fight and work at the same time. If it was possible for the people doing it at the wall in Jerusalem, at, at, when they were rebuilding those walls, it's possible for us to do it as well. And there's a promise with the helper. When you work, it will not be in vain. Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly, my reward's with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Also, helpers pray. Somebody say pray. Matthew 18, 19, and 20. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Is anybody thankful for that tonight? Helpers are not afraid to be bold and aggressive when they need to be. But then the, the question may arise as, as we wrap this up tonight. Well, 2020, what, that role of, of the helper, surely there's going to be plenty of people that are going to be available to, to help. Surely there's going to be plenty of people that are going to be able to, to be there. Maybe John chapter 5 is a foreshadowing of what and where we find ourselves. Because in 2020, helpers seem to be at a very, very high premium. Matthew 9, 37. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest. It's great. But the laborers. Our view. Pray therefore, the Lord of the harvest, he'll send forth laborers into his harvest. John 4, 35. Say, say not ye there four months, and then cometh, cometh harvest. Because what is that? What is that? That's observing. Well, on down the road, there's going to be, there's going to be, no, that's not what the Lord told. That's not what the Lord said. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He that reapeth receiveth wages, gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye entered into their labors. The stage is set. Where are the helpers? Right here. There's some here in this building tonight. Could we all stand? Three roles. Three roles on the stage of the supernatural. The receiver. The observer. And the helper. In our progression, in our relationship with Jesus Christ, we may find ourselves at a different place tonight. Multiple people. Nobody will be exactly at the same place as somebody else. But God, help me to have the right progression in my life. Why? Because I don't care what role I play. I certainly don't want to be the observer. But as far as either the receiver or the helper, I want to be around when the supernatural happens. I want to be around when the miracle takes place. And don't ever forget today, what's the greatest miracle that God's ever given to us? The gift of His Spirit. When somebody begins to speak in tongues as the Spirit gives them the utterance, there's no greater miracle than that you can ever experience. Do we lift our hands and lift our hearts tonight? With the fruit of your lips, could you talk to the Lord? Jesus, we thank you tonight. My God, we worship you. My God, we praise you. My God, we understand and we realize you have called us to be used of you in this last and this final hour. Oh, my God, in your name right now we pray, Lord. 
Help us tonight, God. Let us find that right and proper role that you've given to us, God. To be, God, the, the helpers in this last day. But also, there are some that, that need to be recipients of the supernatural. I thank you for that, God. We have, we have seen that. There are some that are still learning. We understand that. But God, we, we reject that, that observer role, Lord Jesus, where our flesh would take over. We want the Spirit to lead us in whatever role that you place us in. We ask you to do that tonight. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, I pray, Jesus. In the name of the Lord, I pray, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's my, my sincere prayer, and I know it is yours as well, that if I find myself in a situation to where I've been touched and I've been affected by the goodness, the mercy, the grace, the healing, the miracle power of Jesus Christ, that I would surely be available and ready to be there for somebody else if they ever needed that. And they're there. They're in your neighborhood. They're on your job. They're in your family. They're, on your, they're, they're in your life. You know them. They're acquaintances of you. Allow God to help you tonight. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the opportunity to study it. God, it is forever settled in heaven. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It is quick and it is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. I ask you right now, Master, that what we have heard tonight will take firm root in the hearts and minds of every man, woman, and child that is both here in this room and is watching online. My God, we thank you for that tonight and we praise you for it. God, as we leave this place, let us take the proper role on the stage of the supernatural. God, to be able to see the greatest harvest and increase that you've promised to us in this last day. We bless you for it and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Kirk has some vegetables. You're welcome to those if you want some. Let everybody here know that they matter. You love them and you appreciate them. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to church tonight. Amen. You're dismissed. We leave you in the grace and favor of the Lord. I love you. In Jesus' name.